This week we're going to be looking at medications as they relate to the respiratory system. There are two parts in this lecture series. And the first one, we're going to take a look at the medication group called antihistamines. By the end of this first section, you should be able to do the following things. Explain the reactions produced by histamine as it is released in response to allergic reactions. Explain the action of and indications for antihistamines. Describe the therapeutic uses of antihistaminics that result from an action on the central nervous system but are not associated with allergic responses. And describe three side effects of antihistaminics. So we can't talk about antihistamines without spending a little bit of time talking about allergic reactions. So we'll back up the train just a little bit to review the aller what allergic reactions are. So if I ask you the question, what is an allergic reaction? You know, I might get some descriptions or a variety of things in that, that that you recall from actually experiencing an allergic reaction. The technical definition would be that it's an antigen-antibody reaction. And if you look at our pictures down here, you can see the uh, circle that, that um, follows through. If you start at number one, what happens is you get an allergen something far into the body comes into the body and as a result your cell the um, white blood cells make antibodies specifically in the form of IgE and these IgE antibodies then float around throughout the rest of most usually throughout the rest of your lifetime um, there are some transient that they will increase and decrease at times, but they float around in your in your blood cells or in your blood, just waiting to see if this invader comes in again. If the invader comes in a second time, then these antibodies set up a reaction so that the body goes into a mass attack of the foreign invader or of the allergen. So what happens is sort of like warfare. You get the first little battle of exposure and so okay we know that these guys are out there so now we're going to go and arm ourselves and stock away all kinds of weapons, put them away so that the next time they come we go out for full-fledged attack. And that's exactly what happens in an allergic reaction. Now, most of you have either experienced an allergic reaction or you've known someone who has. So what are the common things, think about it, what are the common symptoms that you see with an allergic reaction? What I can tell you is those symptoms that you get from an allergic reaction is due to the release of a chemical called histamine. Now, histamine is found throughout the body in what are called the mast cells. And this is this purple one on the side here is a representation of what a mast cell might look like. Now, mast cells are usually found along blood vessels. So that's where they like to hang out, right along sides of blood vessels. And the largest concentration of the mast cells are found in the lungs, the gastrointestinal tract, and the skin. So keep those three body regions in mind when you're thinking about um, allergic reactions and what the things are that histamine does in the body.
Now, when we talked about what that allergic reaction looks like, that you get the antigen, such as a tree pollen or a dust mite or something that comes into the body, your white blood cells produce the antibodies, specifically that IgE immunoglobulin, and then on the next exposure, the allergen binds to the IgE and then triggers, what it does is it triggers a release of the mast cell contents. So when that allergen binds with that receptor, it now causes these mast cells to release all kinds of chemicals into the body. Now the substances that are released, um, the big one is histamine. There's a few other ones like heparin is released, um, serotonin, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, platelets, and some eosinophil activating factors. Okay. All of those substances are inside the mast cells. So when this reaction occurs and the allergen binds with the antibody, boom, we get the release of all these chemicals into the body. Now if we look at just histamine itself, okay, um, what's going to happen is when it's released, it's going to interact with membrane receptors in certain tissues and then it's going to produce those symptoms of an allergy. And so what we see um, are some of the following effects. Some of these you may have been in your list of things you recognize as allergy, but some may not have been. So his, histamine, because it sits next to those blood vessels, it causes those small blood vessels to dilate. So the small blood vessels and, and capillaries dilate. They open up. As a result, it'll produce a transient drop in blood pressure. Now, if you get a large amount of histamine, um, this can result in severe hypotension and literally circulatory collapse, which is essentially basically called histamine shock. So a an, an full body release of histamine will cause someone to go into histamine shock. Now, that, those capillaries dilating in the skin result in redness. Makes sense. And the name, what we call that, is erythema. That if it's in the eyes, that dilatation of the capillaries in the eyes will cause redness, redness in the eyes and often will cause allergic conjunctivitis, inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eye. In the brain, it'll cause a headache. The excess fluids and swelling in there in the brain around dilatation of the blood vessels will cause some, may cause someone to have a headache. So again, backing up, we said that histamine causes um, the blood vessels to dilate, but it also causes those capillaries to leak. So fluid leaks out of them. Now the H1 receptors will cause a separation, what they actually do is they cause the epithelial cells that are in the capillaries to separate. That's called why it dilates. They spread apart. And this allows fluid and plasma proteins to leak into the spaces around the vessels. So when you get fluid leaking out, you get edema or swelling. If it occurs in the nose you, and the mucous membranes, you're going to get nasal congestion. If it occurs in your skin, You'll see some swelling, but then eventually you'll see some bumps or some hives, medical term for that being urticaria. So you may see hives come about. The itching and that pain that you see with the histamine response is because the histamine binds to receptors on the nerve endings. And when it binds to those nerve endings, it sends information to the brain um, through the spinal cord that says, ah, I'm itch, I itch. A couple of other things that histamine also can do in the body. In some cases, it'll cause increased peristalsis, 
which means things move through the gastrointestinal tract a little faster and it can cause some diarrhea. And the action of histamine does have um, a sympathetic response that may cause some tachycardia. So you may see the heart rate increasing too. So these are all the things that you will see as a result of your body releasing histamine. And remember, histamine is typically released as the result of an allergic reaction. So how do we block an allergic reaction? We really have two ways that we can, knowing how they occur, there's two places that we can intercept to block an allergic reaction. One is we can prevent the mast cells from releasing those contents. If the mast cells don't release their, the contents, the histamine and the other substances are not released, and therefore, no allergic reaction. The other way we can do it is we can block the H1 receptors. And then the receptors cannot interact with the, hist with the um, allergen and therefore doesn't bind with the mast cells and therefore we don't have a release of histamine again. So let's look at the first way. If we're going to use a medication to block the first meth uh, method, we would use something called a mast cell release inhibitor. Now, mast cell release inhibitors have no effect on histamine receptors. So you have to keep in mind that they must be administered before the histamine release has begun. Once histamine's released, the mast cell inhibitors will do nothing. Okay, They have to prevent the cells from releasing the histamine. Um, there's one particular medication um, that we use, and that would be chromalin sodium is a good example. And what it does is it prevents the onset of symptoms of an allergic reaction as a result of exposure before the reactive process can take place. So it prevents those mast cells from releasing um, histamine. And as a result, you don't get an allergic reaction when exposed. There are really, um, in addition to chromalin, chromalin we had, there's probably about, in the last research, about four um, other, there might be a few more now, but Last time I looked into were about four other um, mast cell release inhibitors. And the other four were primarily used in ophthalmics. Um, and what they will do is they go um, and they prevent um, conjunctivitis. That is that itchiness and redness of the eye. So what they do is... Um, they go and they prevent the release of the histamine in the eyes, someone who has allergic conjunctivitis. So by using these drops, or they will um, prevent the mast cells from breaking, breaking down in the eyes, and therefore they don't get that, that red eye. Now understand, um, if it's, that only works if it's an allergic reaction. If the conjunctivitis is due to a bacteria or a virus, then you're going to need to treat it otherwise. But this, that would be, there are medications that particularly work well for people um, who get the allergic conjunctivitis being around dust um, or, you know, pollens and those kind of things that they get those itchy, watery eyes. So the key being with these medications is remember, since they, release, they prevent mast cells from releasing the histamine, uh, from releasing its contents, you have to have them in the body ahead of time. So these are the medications you take as a maintenance. Um, allergy season is coming up, so you start taking a mass uh, chromalin sodium, and the chromalin sodium then um, prevents the, the mast cells from releasing its contents when there is an exposure. If you don't take them ahead of time, they won't work. 
The other group of medications then that we use for treating allergies are antihistamines against histamine. So what would be the reasons we would use an antihistamine, the clinical indications? You know, as listed here, um, allergic reactions, the things that you might see, urticaria, um, hay fever, insect bites, um, rhinitis, dermatitis. They will relieve the itching on the local surface of and pain of bug bites and stings and excoriations. So we can give them topically, and you may have done that. You may have put an antihistamine on topically um, to help with a bug bite. Um, Benadryl is a good example of that. I know I keep Benadryl um, um, ointment with me all the time when I am hiking because if I get a bug bite, I can put the Benadryl ointment on and I don't get that big giant welt that occurs and I don't scratch myself open. Um, there are a couple of other antihistamines, though, um, then that have a little different effect on the body. Um, and what happens is there's a couple of antihistamines specifically that um, are used because of their action on the brain um, that helps prevent vertigo and motion sickness. And that would be, for example, you may have heard of Dramamine or Antivert. Um, both of those are antihistamines, but they seem to re, um, have um, an influence on a significant influence on the central nervous system, on the brain, and they are um, useful in preventing that motion sickness. In addition, um, antihistamines um, have a side, a side effect of sedation, um, and that side effect can sometimes be used for ther as a therapeutic use also. So, um, we, some antihistamines may also be included um, as over-the-counter sleeping aids, such as nitol. Um, and nitol then helps sleep, how, um, causes sedation, which helps you sleep. Now, do remember, if you are taking um, something like Dramamine, Antivert, or Nitol for motion sickness or to help you sleep, you will also get the other side effects that come along with antihistamines. Common side, um, so you must keep that in mind when taking an antihistamine, even if you aren't taking it for an allergy, you may still get some of the other common side effects. So, um, in a nutshell, when we're talking about, to wrap this up, how do, you should be able to make, how do antihistamines work? Another picture, basically what's going to happen is the antihistamine, as you can see, the little purple ball comes into that receptor. And so when the mast cells release their histamine, they cannot bind with the receptor, and as a result, um, minimizes the allergic reaction. Note, you may still get some receptors it doesn't bind with, so you may get a mild reaction. And if it's already started to bind, if you've already started the reaction, but you give it, it'll fill in the rest of the receptors that have a bound yet, and it'll decrease the reaction. Um, a couple of antihistamines, you should be able to name a couple. Um, we went through several of them here. So hopefully in your mind you've got a couple of names um, that you can think of. And what are the side effects? Um, if you've ever taken an antihistamine, you may be familiar with these side effects. Um, we did talk in the last um, slide about the fact that drowsiness and sedation are common. Um, the other one that is, a, that is the, probably the most common side effect of an antihistamine is called xerostomia. Um, xerostomia is basically it's, it's spelled X-E-R-O-S-T-O-M-I-A. And it's the medical term for a dry mouth. Um, and that is, if you've ever taken an antihistamine, um, you've noticed you get very thirsty. Um, dry mouth, dry mucous membranes, the nose may get dry, the eyes may get dry. And that's what people complain about the most when they're taking an antihistamine. Um, and then your adverse effects, if you recall, from back in the beginning, we talked about the effects that we really got to watch. Um, you could see um, 
a rapid heart rate. Um, you could see some tachycardia from it. You could see some hypotension. Again, you've got a histamine response going on here. So you could see some hypotension along with it. And anorexia, um, you may see a uh, decrease in appetite with it too. Those are, those are much less common though. Most common, um, the ones we mentioned, dry mouth, some drowsiness, and sedation.